I'm Don Mockholtz, and you're listening to Looking Up with Don. This is the Looking Up with Don podcast, episode number 86, for the week of August 25th, 2021. That would have been my mom's 100th birthday, but she passed away in 2016. The related website for this podcast is donmacholtz.com. That is spelled D-O-N-M-A-C-H-H-O-L-Z.com. Two H's. What's up in the sky this week? As our week begins on Wednesday, August 25th, The moon is bright, rising about an hour after evening astronomical twilight. By Tuesday, August 31st, the moon will be a thick crescent in our morning sky, rising after midnight. This is a good week to get out in the evening for some dark sky observing. Jupiter and Saturn are both in our evening sky, as is the Milky Way in the center of our galaxy. This week and next week are good times to invite the neighbors over to look at the stars. There's no end to the things that can be seen. And don't forget the star Myra, marked on Podcast 86, Map 2, Morning Sky. It is at its maximum brightness this week. The Astronomical League, an umbrella group made up of 240 local astronomy clubs, held their virtual national convention called Alcon 21 via Zoom, Facebook, and YouTube this past week. It had many memorable talks by some of the top astronomers in the world, more than half of them being amateur astronomers. They also presented awards, and I, Don Mockles, received the Leslie Peltier Award. It was presented to me for my 12 comet discoveries and my numerous contributions to observational astronomy. I had a couple minutes this weekend to say thank you, but I also put together a six-minute acceptance speech. The speech is on my website, donmacholtz.com. When you hit the Listen Now button, it takes you to a YouTube clip of my speech. I will not repeat the speech here. It has some visual props that can not be done justice in a podcast. So I suggest you go to my website and watch that speech. Will you be able to see the International Space Station this week, which for our purposes begins Wednesday, August 25th through Tuesday, July 31st. It depends upon where you are located. This week we have six zones. All you need to know is your latitude. North of 60 degrees north, you will not see the International Space Station at all. Between 48 and 60 degrees north, It will be in your morning sky for at least part of the week. The further south you live, in the band of 48 to 60 degrees, the more of the week the ISS will be in your sky. From 35 through 48 degrees north, the ISS will be in your morning sky for the whole week, sometimes twice per per night. From 25 through 35 degrees north, the ISS will be in your morning sky for only the first few days of the week. The next area would be from 35 degrees south to 25 degrees north. This is a large equatorial band. The International Space Station will not be in your sky at all. From 55 To 35 degrees south, it will be in your evening sky, near 35 degrees south for only the last few days of the week, but further south for the whole week. To determine where it will be in your sky, go to the website heavens-above.com 
and enter your location, then click on ISS. With the moon leaving the evening sky, let's get out and look at some comets. Next week, I'll be adding more comets to the mix, those that are visible in the morning sky. These comets are plotted on Podcast 86, Map 3, Comets. The positions, that is the right ascension and declination and distances from the Earth and Sun for each day, can be found on Podcast 86, Comet Positions. You can also get the positions for these and other comets from the website heavens-above.com, then click on Comets. So, here are the comets. First one is C2020T2 Palomar. It's presently in the constellation Libra, and it's head toward, is headed toward Scorpius. This comet was discovered on October 7, 2020 at magnitude 19 from Mount Palomar. It has been in our evening sky for the past few months and is still hanging out at about magnitude 10 or 11. It was closest to the sun last month at 2.1 astronomical units with one astronomical unit, or AU, being the distance from the Earth to the sun. It is also presently 2.1 astronomical units from the Earth. Next comet is 252P Linear. It's in Virgo, not far from the star Spica. It is about magnitude 11. It was discovered in 2011. It takes 5.3 years to orbit the sun. It's presently 1.7 astronomical units from the Earth and 1.2 astronomical units from the sun. The next comet is probably the biggest comet in our group. It's known as C-2017 K2 Pan Stars. It was discovered more than four years ago in May of 2017. At that time, it was 16 astronomical uni units from the sun, which is very distant. It will be closest to the sun in December 2022, 16 months from now, at 1.8 astronomical units. At that time, it should be bright enough to see in binoculars. Now, it is traveling through the center of the constellation Hercules in the Keystone at magnitude 12. Be the first on your block to see this distant comet, which presently is 5.3 astronomical units from us as far away as Jupiter. And finally, C2021 A1 Leonard was discovered at the beginning of this year and is working its way to its perihelium early next year at a distance of only 0.6 astronomical units. The comet will probably be visible in binoculars and may reach unaided eye brightness toward the end of this year. It is faint now, magnitude 14.9, and you might need imaging equipment to catch it. I like to do projects. A project has a beginning, an end, and a planning stage. Usually my projects involve building something. Presently, it's a greenhouse. This is a goal we have set for ourselves to build the greenhouse. I sometimes think that the opposite of having a project is to meander through life. That's probably not really true. Applying this to astronomy, there is, there's nothing wrong with going out at night and just looking up. Everyone should do that once in a while. If you want to go a step or two further, then get involved in something with some order, a project perhaps. In my early days, I would just take my telescope out, a two-inch refractor in the mid-1960s, and look at whatever was up. Before long, I was making a list of objects that I wanted to see. I still have some of those lists. 
An observing program can get you out there observing with a purpose. The Astronomical League has dozens of observing programs, from planetary nebula to radio astronomy to learning the constellations and and so much more. Search the Internet for the Astronomical League and look at what they have to offer. Each program comes with a coordinator to help you out. And most have a booklet or a spreadsheet outlining what's required to pass the program. Some can be completed in a few nights. Some will take a couple of years. And you can work on several at once. Another organization with observing programs is ALPO, the Association of Lunar and Planetary Observers. This group is solely solar system stuff like meteors, comets, the planets, the moon, and the sun. Go to the ALPO website and find out more. The SLU Automated Telescopes has observing programs too. You don't need to own a telescope. For this one, you rent their telescope to image the sky for you. This is SLU, S-L-O-O-H. You could get the Boy Scout Astronomy Merit Badge book and complete the projects. The Girl Scouts have a Space Science Badge. You can make up your own projects. Find all the deep sky objects in each constellation. There's, there's books written to help you with that or find many of the 2,500 Herschel objects, or find all of the 110 Messe objects. Watch meteors. Sketch features on the moon. Advocate for light pollution control. Build a telescope. Build a radio telescope. Look for the planets and bright stars in the daytime. Photograph our image stuff. I could go on and on. And on these podcasts, I do suggest projects you can do. Next week, I'll discuss at least two more in detail. To recap the podcast, what's up this coming week? The moon is in the morning sky, giving us plenty of evening dark sky to see Jupiter, Saturn, the summer Milky Way, and some comets. See the star Myra in the morning sky and pick a project. You have been listening to Looking Up with Don, podcast episode number 86 for August 25th, 2021. I'm Don Mockholtz. Once again, the related website for this podcast is donmockholtz.com. That is spelled D O N. M-A-C-H-H-O-L-Z dot com, two H's. You can contact me at DonTheAstronomer at gmail dot com. Once again, that is DonTheAstronomer at gmail dot com. God willing and pod willing, I'll be back next week. For another episode of Looking Up with Don, we will discuss what's up in the sky. I'll discuss an experiment with Jupiter that you'll probably fail at, but it's worth a try. How's that for a tease? And a long term project lasting years that will need only 20 minutes of work. And we'll look at even more comets. All that and more. Thank you for listening. See the sky this week. I'll see you next week.